Welcome to this video. Today I'm going to talk to you about combinations, amounts and accumulation of FODMATs. My name is Suzanne Perazzini and I'm the author of two low FODMAP cookbooks and the creator of two low FODMAP coaching programs. So I get this question a lot about combinations and amounts and the accumulation of FODMAPs because this diet is not, as I've said many times, a simple one at all. It's not just a list of good foods and bad foods. It's also about the amounts, the combinations, and the accumulation during the day. I like to think of it as FODMAPs accumulating during the day until you go to the toilet where you zero them out. So it's like a glass. Once it's full, it starts to spill out over the top. And all that that spills out over the top are the FODMAPs that go on from the small intestine down into the large intestine and get fermented there. Up till it spills over, those FODMAPs are getting absorbed in the small intestine, which is where it should happen. Any excess, and off they go down into the large bowel, and that's the problem. So we have to monitor very carefully throughout the day what we eat, and also not to eat too many at once. Right, so for example, if you've got a salad, and you've got carrots, peppers, tomatoes in it, for example. We know that the average person with IBS can have one carrot. You can have a half a cup of red peppers and you can have a small tomato. But if you put those all together, that's going to be one plus one plus one equals three. And that's going to overflow the cup. So you take each of those down to a third of the amount, so a third of the carrot, a third of the half a cup, and a third of the tomato, and mix those together. Now as long as you make sure that you've got some protein in there and some carbs, maybe some gluten-free bread or some rice or whatever it is that you want as your carb, then you're going to get a good rounded meal with your vegetables in there. But if you put those vegetables at the average amount and put them all together, that's going to be an overload. It's that simple. So then that food gets digested through and the next meal you can do the same thing. What you don't want to be doing though is accumulating too many during the day. So I wouldn't be having a plate of vegetables at each of the five small meals that you should be eating because that then is going to really tire the body down. It's a little bit like with sugar that is, it's 50% fructose and 50% glucose. And in small quantities, the glucose cell for cell will pull the fructose through the lining of the small intestine. And so you won't have any problems. But after a while, if there's too much sugar, the glucose gets tired and stops doing its job. So it's something similar about the accumulation during the day. You don't want to, at each meal, be taking right to the max of the FODMAPs that you can eat for that meal. Just leave a little bit of a leeway. And we're all completely different and this will be an individual thing for you and you have to work it out yourself. But we are, be aware of that equation, I suppose, really. Or it's, it's an addition. One plus one plus one equals three. And we want to keep it at one. Right, well, I hope that helped you with trying to sort out. It, it is not simple. I'm not saying it is simple but it is individual. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't, you could subscribe to my channel or perhaps even give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it or leave a comment. All right, thank you for watching and goodbye.